Hello, Golf R World. Today we're going to be giving the Golf R a bath. Okay, so I'm not a professional detailer, and this video isn't about getting your car to showroom level detail. I'm a busy dad, and I just like to keep my Golf R looking nice. This video is mostly about trying to get you a little bit thinking a little more seriously instead of that standard bucket of soap and wash mitt and uh, thinking about taking care of the vehicle just a little bit better. So I'm gonna be showing you a couple of the products that I'm using to take care of my Golf R. That doesn't mean they're the best products. If you feel like your soap is working a little bit better, then go with what uh, works for you. Um, just use something a little bit better than the generic stuff that you can get at AutoZone if you can, and just to make sure that you're taking care of your Golf R a little bit better. Okay, so these are the materials that I have for the Golf R washing today. I've got these two uh, high quality um, McGuire's mitts that I use for anything that has paint on it and we'll be using that with a grit guard uh, to make sure that these stay in really good shape and aren't scratching the paint. I've got two other microfiber cloths that I use for the wheels and other things that aren't painted like the plastic bits. I've got some microfiber towels, you really can't have enough of those uh, for drying. I like these uh, chemical guys ones. And then I've got a bunch of generic microfibers uh, in different colors. I recommend the different colors so you can use them for different stuff. So like some of these you can use for interior or glass or, or wheels or whatnot and uh, you can keep those all separated so you know what uh, purpose that they're serving. And then I've got uh, a couple of regular terry cloths for kind of getting into the wheels a little bit, and then some wheel woolies uh, for scrubbing those wheels, as well as some wheel brushes. I've also got this uh, soap foamer from Chemical Guys in attachment, as well as a couple of buckets, one of those with a grit guard, uh, which is very important, because as you rinse off your, your mitt, you're making sure all that stuff stays at the bottom of the bucket, and is not uh, being transferred back onto the paint of the vehicle and scratching up that paint. Okay, so here's the product lineup that we're going to be using today. Again, if you feel like you have a better product, go ahead and post that in the comments. Uh, but go with whatever works for you. you know, nothing uh, says that these are set in stone and are absolutely the ones that you have to use. So we've basically got a, a, a good wheel cleaner here. I like this because it, it kind of goes red and highlights the part of the wheels that you actually need to clean. Uh, we've got a good quality soap here that isn't going to strip off our wax or sealer. We've got uh, a pretty good glass cleaner that doesn't streak and is safe for tinting. Got an interior cleaner, uh, just kind of a generic interior. We've got a, uh, a generic soap for those tough spots on the inside that need to be scrubbed real good. So we've got this 303, which you can kind of think of this like suntan lotion for those non-painted parts of the vehicle, which keeps them looking nice for a long time. Rain-X, if you're not using it, you should think about using it because it's great stuff. Got some plastics that I use for the headlights. Keeps them looking fresh and doesn't give that uh, cloudy look. You don't have to use this every time. Uh, I just use it occasionally once every couple washes. And then some uh, tire shine to make those tires looking nice. I'm not gonna be waxing or showing out a wax in this video. Since I don't have a lot of free time, what I tend to do is just take the car once a year and get it professionally sealed, which I've already done and this has only been sealed for about two months. So this is gonna be a standard outside car wash and interior uh, detailing today. All right, so we're gonna get started with these wheels here. And what you want to do is just spray that down with the wheel cleaner at first before you get anything wet or anything like that. And the nice thing about the Sonex wheel cleaner is that as it turns, uh, it starts off green, but it eventually will turn all of the uh, particles that are on the wheel that are dirty, uh, a nice red color because it interacts with the metal shavings. And then you can see which parts of the wheel actually need to be cleaned. cleaner will get most of the gunk off and between the rest of your brushes now you should be able to get in here and get uh, any stubborn spots off what I like to do is just take a normal bucket of soap um, nothing special going on here and just get a nice soft bristle and just kind of get back in here and just give it a nice good scrub and then once I'm done with that I'll use the woolies and actually get in here and actually get all the the nitty-gritty spots and then I'll use these last two little brushes to kind of work in all those little grooves I really recommend these woolies. They can be a little bit expensive, but this uh, disc brake here is really sharp, and after spraying all that really disgusting uh, chemical cleaner on it, um, I have even before on the Golf R, when I've been in here trying to scrub with a normal mitt or something, have, have cut myself. So these just get in here really easy, and allow you to scrub the inside of the tire, and get a nice good clean job on this without having to 
worry about trying to get your hands in here, potentially cut yourself, or maybe miss a spot. Definitely get different sizes because like this one can't fit in between the brake, but this one can do it no problem. And so it helps to have a lot of wheel brushes. Okay, so with the wheels done, uh, one thing I like to do before I move on to washing the car is use the same wheel stuff I was using to clean these exhaust tips. The trick here is just not to spray anything directly into the exhaust. So we'll just get them wet. And get them soaked up and cleaned up. Okay, so now we're gonna take our car soap. Uh, this is a good car soap as it doesn't strip off any wax or sealant. And we're gonna go ahead and throw that into the Chemical Guys Sudzer thing uh, up to the soap line here. And then fill the rest of the water. So we're going to go ahead and get the entire car wet and from this point forward we're going to keep the car wet until it's time to dry. I've got my sudser ready to go ahead and put a good layer of soap down. I'm going to fill up this grit bucket uh, with just clean water and this is what we're going to use to rinse. Use the quick attachment. I have this set to zero, which is the most soap possible. And we're going to put a nice lubricating layer of suds down on this hood. Nothing to it. So now I'm going to take my wash mitt that's dedicated to paint, get it wet. And the trick here is that <clears throat> we want to minimize scratching. So we're going to take a nice even pass across this paint, not pressing too hard. And we'll do that twice and then flip the mitt and then two more. And now we need to rinse this off from the grit guard. So we'll come in here and press down and make sure that all those particles that we just picked up are going to get rubbed off and go to the bottom of that bucket. Okay, with this nice and rinsed off, you can go ahead and do a couple more swipes. You notice that I'm not scrubbing the same spot over and over. We're keeping nice, even strokes, flipping the mitt. Nice even passes. If you come across a spot that's tough where it has a bunch of bug guts on it or something that is uh, harder to get, then what you do is you respray that area, let it sit for a second, and then make a nice even pass again on it, making sure not to scrub all those particles into the paint, which is what develops those scratches. So there's a write-up in the VW Vortex forums about how granular and how specific you can get with the pattern and which panels you should wash first. So if you want to get that detailed, you can. Um, I like to keep it pretty simple and just try to follow best practice, which is just making sure that you're not grinding all of the grime into the, into the paint. And that's kind of the method that we're going to take for the whole vehicle. For these black parts and stuff, I like to use a different wash mitt for those. So for like the headlights and things like that, I'll take a different wash mitt that's not dedicated to the paint and wash those. And then we get back to the paint again, I'll use my paint mitt and make nice even passes. And that's the way we'll do the entire vehicle, making sure to always scrub that 
mitt. And if you feel like your rinse bucket is getting really nasty, go ahead and dump it out and start with a new one. Make sure when you're doing the rinse process and you're doing the scrub process, you're ensuring to keep the rest of the car wet. And I'm basically just gonna do the rest of the car just like I showed you here, making those nice even passes. With that sudzer and the grip bucket and dedicated mitts, it's a pretty simple, straightforward process. About halfway through the wash, I like to switch out the mitts just to make sure that I've got a fresh one and not rubbing anything into that paint. Don't forget while you're rinsing to keep the entire car wet. When the car's fully washed, it's time to dry, but drying is the most dangerous part of the process and is the most likely to cause scratches and problems in your paint. So this is your last opportunity to kind of do a once over the vehicle and make sure that you haven't missed any spots uh, or any grime left over. And if you feel good, go ahead and uh, Break out whatever your favorite microfiber drying towel is, like these ones from Chemical Guys. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat the same process where we're gonna do a one swipe over and rub that, uh, that water off. This is one of the main reasons that I have so many of these is so that I could just swap out when this one gets uh, full of water and so that I don't keep using the same towel to wipe uh, down. Okay, with our clean and dry, it's time to pull her in the garage. You don't need to dry the windows where we clean those with the glass cleaner. And I like to clean the wheels or dry the wheels when they get inside the garage. But uh, she's all clean now and dry. And I'll go ahead and pull her in. Okay, with her in the garage, it's time to spend some quality time with these wheels. Just drying them with a, the dedicated blue fiber cloths. Okay, with the wheels dry, what we need to do now is crack open every inner surface of the vehicle and go ahead and tackle uh, all these inner pieces that have gotten a little bit wet and dirty that weren't uh, addressed by the outside car wash. So we can see that there's some dirt in these inner pieces. <clears throat> now you don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, washing the outside of the vehicle and just ignore these inner spots. So I've gone ahead and cracked all this open and we'll be touching up all this. You can see here that this is all wet still and what I like to do and you guys will probably have some comments about this I'm sure in the comment section below but what I like to do <clears throat> is I like to take those same fiber costs that uh, are now damp from drying the vehicle and that's what I like to do uh, to use to hit up these inner spots <clears throat> because we're not going to obviously be putting a lot of soap and water onto this these are already damp and they shouldn't have a lot of dirt on them if you clean the car properly. And you don't have to use these over and over again. You can just, once you've touched up a couple of the inner spots, you can just toss this away and that one's not going to be used anymore. And then you could take another one of these damp ones and address the inside part in here. And again, don't rub. Just take uh, the cloth and just kind of just do a once over in one direction and if there's really tough spots like right here you just use different parts of the rag and scrub that inner part until you've got it nice and clean okay so we're ready to clean the windows now and one of the things you can do is put these uh, windshield wipers into the service position I'll show you how to do that now it's a lot easier to clean so what you need to do is without your foot on the brake uh, we're just going to turn the ignition on not actually start the car so we'll push that it'll come on We'll turn it right back off and then push the windshield wipers once and you can see that they are now stuck in the service position and because they're in that service position I can come on the outside of the car now and just pull these up and I can easily get access to the entire windshield <clears throat> and wash that. So basically we're just going to use some glass cleaner and a microfiber cloth and just wash the inside and the outside of these now. Alright, with 
with all the exterior and interior windows cleaned, uh, every other wash what I'll do is I'll spray down a, a rag with some Rain-X and apply it to all the exterior windows, sides, and hatch. Uh, this is obviously optional, but I like the effect. When you spray this on and wipe it on the window, you're going to get like a haze. It kind of looks like a fog that covers the entire window. That's perfectly fine. You want that to happen on all the windows. And once that haze is kind of, uh, it looks really cloudy, you, then you take a clean cloth and come back and wipe the haze away. And that's how you get the rain X on the windows. So with the rain X finish, the next thing is for the 303. I usually apply this every other wash as well. And you can think of this kind of like suntan lotion for your car. This does not go on the paint. Uh, we're going to be putting this on all the plastic pieces, like the outside pieces of the uh, windshield wipers, uh, the side view mirror, all this black trim and rubber grommet pieces that you see here, down in the front right here. And the trick to this is <clears throat> I only use a terry cloth instead of a microfiber, and you don't want too much of this on the vehicle. So if you're streaking at all, you've used too much. So very light application, again, every two to three washes. And again, I can't stress enough, uh, you do not need to lose a lot of this product. A very little goes a long way. Well, the mailman just stopped by in the middle of detailing the vehicle. He drops off this very big package, and I'm pretty sure I know what's inside. That's going to be a pretty involved project, but stay tuned for that. Okay, so for the inside, I use a couple different things to uh, detail inside. So my favorite thing for the Piano Black is just one of these Swiffer dusters, which if you're married like me, uh, you have plenty of these laying around the house. If you don't, go pick one up at Target. It's fantastic. You don't have to get the uh, Piano Gloss All uh, icky with some type of spray, and uh, it dusts it perfectly and leaves it looking like it just came from the dealership. So just grab one of these and wipe down all the interior uh, piano black pieces and you will be in good shape. For things that I don't want to spray that are need a little bit more than dusting, I just use a microfiber cloth that's a little bit damp. And that's perfect for the steering wheel and stuff like that to kind of get some of my, uh, you know, any oil buildup or anything like that wiped off real good. Same with the gear knob. A nice damp cloth, no product. For the dash and other surfaces, I do want to clean more thoroughly. I'll use this uh, Meguiar's Interior Detail Cleaner. It's safe on any surface inside the vehicle, including leather, but all I use it for inside is just the dash and the door sides and stuff like that. One thing that I haven't found a product that I'm really happy with yet is something for the leather. So if you have any recommendations for something that you know isn't too greasy and can be used to wipe this down, uh, go ahead and post in the comments. I really like to see that because I haven't found anything yet that uh, that works really great. Okay, so with the interior completely wiped down and uh, everything nice and clean, the only thing left to do is just vacuum up. And if you don't have one of these shot backs, they make a nice addition to the garage. Just unloop the hose and vacuum away. Another optional step that you can do is use this Plastex, which is going to keep your headlight looking nice and new instead of having that cloudy look after a little bit of time passes. I only use this about every four to five car washes. You apply just a very small amount to a terry cloth. You got to be very careful not to touch the paint when you do this. And you just basically wipe it in. And then when you're done wiping it in, you use a microfiber cloth to clear off any of the excess. And that's pretty much it, every four to five washes. Okay, so wrapping up, the last thing we really need to do is give our tires a little shine uh, with some hot shine. And I'm just gonna spray a little bit right here. You wanna be very careful not to apply too much because you don't want uh, any kickback coming up on the paint here. So just a little bit goes a long way. Spray that on here and just wipe and give it a nice looking shine. Okay, so that about wraps that up. She's all 
clean inside and out, ready for another two weeks. So that's pretty much the schedule, at least for me, uh, driving in kind of a dusty Texas area, that's uh, how often I need to do that. The brakes, especially in the front, uh, generate a lot of dust, and I find that about two weeks is about the interval that I need to, to tackle that. Again, uh, microfiber is kind of your friend, as you can see from the, uh, the carnage here. Uh, you can't have enough of those. Uh, you'll use quite a few to make sure that you're not scratching anything. If this video helped you out, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe for more golf R videos.